Let's discuss GraphQL subscriptions. In all of the videos we posted, we usually discussed how to use queries or mutations, but there is also a third operation type in GraphQL, which is called subscription. And this operation type is useful. In all of the videos we posted, we usually discussed how to use queries or mutations when you're working with streaming data or real-time data, such as in a JET application. In this video, I'll be showing how to use subscriptions together with StepSend in all of the videos we posted, we usually discussed how to use queries or mutations for every possible data source, meaning that you no longer have to rely on your data source in order to support subscriptions in your GraphQL API. So let's go. In a fresh VS Code project, I cloned one of the examples from the Steps and GitHub repo that contains all the examples. This example is called with subscriptions. And in here you can find a GraphQL schema that is set up to have a query that returns a random number. I'm using a ECMAScript option uh, instead of a REST API endpoint, as this way I can control what is being returned. And I'm using a simple math.floor function to generate a random number in JavaScript. So let me start the steps and GraphQL server by running steps and start. This will deploy the schema to steps and cloud from where I can access it to use the subscription and queries that I have in the schema. Of course, you could always set it up to work with Docker in case you want to use it locally on your machine. So in my terminal, you can see there it has multiple endpoints, including a local host endpoint that I can use for exploration of the GraphQL schema. So let me go to a browser where I already opened up this graphical interface. And in here I can find the documentation and I can find the query that we just saw that generates a random number. So I could query this by running uh, random, opening it with the curly brackets and defining number. And if I run this query, it will generate a random number for me. And every time I rerun this query, it will generate a new random number. You can see I also have a subscription set up in my GraphQL schema. And this is also called random. So I have a query called random, but I also have a subscription called random. And what it's doing, it is materializing the query called random. So what does this mean? It will mean that StepSend would pull the GraphQL query called random every 10 seconds by default to check if the number is updated. If the number is updated, it will generate a new value of the query. So let me go back to um, the graphical where we can find the subscription in the schema. And as you can see here, it's also called random and it returns something of type random. However, I can use the operation type query to get a random number but I'm not able to use the operation type subscription to get the same random number. And as GraphQL is showing me, this is because I need to use something that is supporting a streaming protocol, which GraphQL isn't. So let me go back to VS Code. In this repo, I also set up a client, which you can find in the file index.js in the client directory. It is taking my steps and API key and my steps and account name to generate a client that is able to read the GraphQL subscription. In order to set this up, you need to add your own credentials to the .environment.sample file and rename it to .environment. And in here, you need to place your steps and API key and also your steps and account name. And after you've done so, you can open up a new terminal window and from there you can run uh, npm start. So this will start the client um, by starting the file index.js and running the code that is inside this file. And as you can see, it has my uh, subscriptions endpoint, which is slightly different from the endpoint that you're used to. Because we, don't, we no longer serve this endpoint over HTTP, instead we're using a streaming protocol. And as you can see, every 10 seconds, a new value of the query will be outputted in my terminal. Because every 10 seconds, the GraphQL query will generate a new random number if it is being pulled by the subscription query. And this is all working fine, of course, but let's try it out with a slightly more difficult example. So you can use subscriptions in StepSend for every possible data source. So we just saw how to do it for... In all of the videos we posted, we usually discussed how to use queries or mutations, a simple mock REST API. But let's see how it works if we're using an actual REST API. So for this, I found the 
uh, Binance API, which shows me the conversion rate between Ethereum and US dollars. In all of the videos we posted, we usually discussed how to use queries or mutations. So we can use this REST API and subscribe to the query that we generate for this REST API to see any updates possible in my GraphQL client in my terminal. In all of the videos we posted, we usually discussed how to use queries or mutations. And besides REST APIs, you could also subscribe to databases, other GraphQL APIs, or even SOAP APIs. Let's head back to VS Code, where we can run the steps and import curl command to import the Binance REST API. So we can run the command steps and import curl, define the REST API endpoint right here, and then we can do some other stuff like the query name. Let's call this Binance. Let's call the directory Binance as well. Uh, what else can we do? We can name the query type. And let's set this to Binance as well. So when I run this steps and import curl command, it will generate a new GraphQL schema based on the output of this endpoint. As you can see, I have a new file called Binance with a query called Binance. And then it will also give me a query, uh, which is called Binance as well. So let me restart the steps and GraphQL API by running steps and start. In my graphical interface, I can now also find this new query, which is called Binance. It will take two parameters, a symbol, which is the um, identifier of the conversion we're trying to make, and also the window size, which we set to 10 minutes while importing. So let me try and run this query by running query, Binance. Uh, let's give it a symbol, which was Ethereum US dollars, and also set the window size to 10 minutes. And then there are several, um, several fields we could request if we click on the Binance query type. So we can find the close time, the count, the high price, price change. So let's try and look for the price change. So the first time we run this query, we can see price change is equal to 0 0.14. If we rerun this query, it values might change, as you can see right now. So every time we rerun this query, the value will be slightly different. So in our VS Code project, we're going to be heading over to the Binance.GraphQL file. And we will be copy pasting the definition of this query and moving it over to the subscription right in the subscription slash index.graphql. We can just copy paste this. And then we also need to add a add materializer directive that will be looking for changes in the query called Binance which is the query that we have in our Binance index.graphql file. And then as soon as we save this, this new query, um, or actually this new subscription, will be uploaded to our GraphQL schema. So in Graphical, I can now find this new subscription that it works with Binance. So let me just take this and copy it so we can move it over to our client. In client slash index.js, we're going to be replacing this part uh, with our latest subscription that we tried out in the graphical, which of course didn't work as we need to use a client in order to read the changes in this, um, in this subscription. We copy it over, let's save it and restart our GraphQL client by running steps and start. So this will look for changes in our schema and then it will look for the query Binance with the symbol Ethereum US dollars uh, and a window size of 10 minutes. So every time the price changes, a new update will be shown here. As you can see, the price change went from 0 0.190 to 0 0.86. And every 10 minutes, Stepson will look for the latest changes in the Binance REST API. And of course, you can use the same pattern for every possible data source. With Stepson, you can create GraphQL APIs for databases, other GraphQL APIs, REST APIs, and even SOAP APIs. In all of the videos we posted, we usually discussed how to use queries or mutations. So the subscriptions you create can work with any of these data sources. Make sure to have a look at the description of this video and where you can find the example that we discussed today. In all of the videos we posted, we usually discussed how to use queries or mutations. And also, if you enjoyed this video, 
make sure to subscribe to our channel as we are posting weekly videos about building cool stuff with GraphQL.